Welcome to this video. This is going to be a video explaining how a big airplane is turned on. You might be wondering if they use a key or something like any other vehicle. And, if you have airplane phobia, then this will help you lose your fear, as airplanes are the safest way of transportation in the world and you are about to see why. So here we are in Los Angeles International Airport, and today's airplane will be the Boeing 737. This simulator is called X-Plane 11, by the way, with the beautiful, Aeromexico livery. And I will also make a Spanish version of this video. So, let's get on board and get started. I will not be explaining or doing any of the navigation stuff since is very complicated and takes a lot more than the startup itself. So, everything is completely shut off. No power in this aircraft whatsoever. This is called the cold and dark state. Let me close the door and take a seat to get started. So this aircraft needs electrical power first, and we have a battery. But, unlike a car, we do not have an alternator because the engines are not started immediately. That is to save fuel, so we instead use generators which also act as alternators. It can be ground power unit, basically a little car that is connected to the airplane to supply power. Or, an auxiliary power unit, which is a small engine in the tail of the plane. Or the engines themselves. So before we move anything, we need to check some stuff. For example, that the parking brake is on. Let's get our passengers on board in the meantime. So now let's go to the overhead panel and switch on the battery. As you can see, we are discharging the battery. So we need any other supply of power fast. I will use the GPU, or ground power unit. You can hear more systems coming to life now. Now we turn on the position lights and this will let the ground crew know that there's people working in the cockpit. Now we arm the emergency lights. Guys, the Leo's on board. We also turn on the window heat so that people don't condensate the windows. You also might want to turn on the no smoking signs. The airplane doesn't know where is it in the world. So we must let the airplane find its position in space by turning on the IRS switches. It will take some time to be done. It's important for navigation. We can fly anywhere if the airplane doesn't know its exact position. Here we can see that it will take 7 minutes for this process to be done. But don't worry, we have more to do in the meantime. As you can see, we do not have much info shown in the displays. But once the IRS is aligned we will see more information. Now we will test the lights in the cockpit and make sure that they are all working properly. Now we will make an overspeed audio test.
a fire warning test as well? And a cargo fire test. Let's welcome our passengers that are headed to San Francisco. Herzlich willkommen, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren. Hier spricht der Kapitän. Im Namen der gesamten Besatzung begrüße ich Sie sehr herzlich auf unserer Boeing 737. Die letzten Vorbereitungen werden in Kürze abgeschlossen sein. Dann schließen wir alle Türen und beginnen unsere Reise. Machen wir sich also. Let's retract the integrated stairs and close the door. We still need four more minutes until the IRS is aligned. But we can go ahead and do other things for now. This device here that looks like a calculator is actually the brain of the airplane is called an FMC or flight management computer. Here we can plan the flight. We tell the airplane its weight and many more functions. I just put the departure airport code in this case is LAX. And I also get coordinates of the airport position which we also need for navigation. Now the San Francisco airport code? Departure runway, which is 25 right. And flight number, which is Aero Mexico 27. Here we tell the airplane the gross weight and fuel reserves in minutes and other numbers which dictate the aircraft's performance. This is the cruise altitude, which is 27,000 feet. From here we would tell the airplane the route, departure and arrivals, which again, I'm not concerned about in this video. So I will skip this step. After all that is done, we set up the autopilot. Flight director, speed, runway heading, which in this case is runway heading 251, as well as altitude. In case that we have to abort a takeoff on the runway, the brakes need to be activated and prepared for a strong stop. So we set the auto brakes to reject and take off, or RTO for short. We are going to be moving soon. Let's turn on the seatbelt signs. Now we can test the stall warning, which is in shaker on the pilot's yoke which vibrates to alert the pilots that they are near a stall. Time to plan the pushback. Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Okay. Before we push back we need to start up the APU. The APU will send air to the engine so that we can start them up. Once they are spinning at a certain speed we can introduce fuel into the engines. But first we need to turn on the left forward fuel pump which is what the APU will use to start up. This is the APU master switch. But first let's turn on fuel and also APU bleed air. Which is going to be the air that goes to the engines and also the electrical hydraulic pumps.
also the anti-collision light so that the ground crew doesn't get close to the airplane. Now turn on the APU, and you will see the exhaust gas temperature gauge go up. Very soon, the APU generator will be available and we won't need the ground power unit. The APU will provide electricity to the airplane. These red flashing lights are the anti-collision lights or also called beacon lights. The APU generators are online. Let's use them. We can see that the APU is indeed charging the battery effectively. Also, the initial reference system, or IRS, is aligned. The primary flight display, the multifunction or navigation display, are working as well as the upper and lower engine displays. Time for pushback. Ground and cockpit, tow is driving up. Now I will get ready for engine startup. So the fuel pumps that are being used can be turned on. But we do not have fuel on the center tank so we only turn on the wing tanks. Double check that the parking brake is set. That is the trim wheel. It helps using less elevator control. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. The pushback tug will hug and lift up the airplane. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Make sure the engine and APU bleed air is on. Then put the engine ignition to ground. We will start engine number two first since it will power up some hydraulics that we need first. Wait for 25% N2 then introduce fuel into the engine. engine ignition switch is spring loaded and will automatically go back to the normal position. Once it does, repeat the same process with engine number one.
Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. The engines are stabilizing now and will not need any additional air from the APU. The engine generators will also go online and we can turn off the APU. Also put the engine ignition to continuous ignition so that during takeoff, the engines don't shut off by accident. Now you can see that both engines are providing electrical power. Now kill the APU. Also we can turn on probe heat and your damper. Tail is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. In case it gets dark. We have different cockpit lights like this dome light. Beautiful. Now we can lower the flaps for takeoff. Flaps allow us to fly at lower speeds without stalling. Good for takeoff and landing. Okay. Before we taxi to the runway we need to check that the control surfaces work correctly. Such as ailerons, rudder, and elevator. These are the spoilers. A KA. Air brakes. We are almost done. Just turn on the taxi lights. Ignition switch to continuous ignition. Doing the final checks. I do not need windshield wipers or anti-ice. Oh yeah. We also need to turn on the packs. Well let's call them air conditioning. Okay, I am Edwin. Also known as Red Wings 27 and this is how a big airplane is turned on. As you see not as easy as a car. LOL thank you for watching and I hope you learned something today, but most importantly enjoyed it. Every time I try your phone, all I'm getting is the dial tone. So baby pick up, and every time that I am home, I do not like to lie alone. So baby pick up, I'm about to drive it.